after the Meiji Restoration in 1868, Japan realized that they had to improve their military if they were not going to be colonized by the West. When it came to the Japanese army, they copied the German example, but when it came to the Navy, they copied the British example. And they set up a Naval Academy, they set up a staff college, Naval Engineering School. They did many of the same things that England had done to create the Royal Navy. That very quickly paid off. And yeah, I think that their, that their military spending was generally in line with, uh, with what it had been in those other countries at the turn of the 20th century. But Japan was a little bit different than, than Britain or others because their economic growth was more top down. It was more directed from by the Meiji Restoration where you had a, a new political class that was actively seeking to create a powerful new nation. It was not a decentralized laissez-faire development as it was in the UK. This was more directed uh, by, from the top. In 1894, 1895, when Japan defeated China and signaled that it was starting to become a military power to be reckoned with. In 1896, they launched a 10-year naval program, buying or building six battleships, 24 cruisers, 20 destroyers, 58 torpedo boats. Japan was developing a formidable navy by the early 20th century. when Russia and Japan stumbled into the Russo-Japanese War in 1905. Now at that time, in, in, in 1905, Russia, of course, was a much bigger country. Uh, their population was three times bigger than Japan. Their iron and steel production was 60 times bigger. They spent three times more on defense. In fact, Russia in, in, in 1905 had the world's largest military with more than 1.1 million men under arms, six times greater than Japan. So one would have thought that when the Russians and the Japanese clashed, the Russians would have won. That's certainly what Tsar Nicholas II thought, but he was cruelly disabused of those illusions because it turned out that the Japanese had actually industrialized and transformed their military much more effectively than the Russians had done. And that disparity became evident in the Battle of Tsushima in 1905. When the Japanese commander, uh, Admiral Togo, uh, proved himself vastly superior to the Russian commander, Admiral Rostovsky. The Battle of Tsushima, the Russians had 42 ships, including eight battleships. They actually outnumbered the Japanese, but the Japanese had more naval guns. They had ships that were much faster than the Russians. They had shells uh, that were much more reliable and much more explosive. And perhaps most important of all, the Japanese had sailors who were much better trained than their Russian counterparts. They could fire twice as fast as the Russian conscript sailors. The Japanese Navy had better training, morale, and leadership. Whereas the Russians had already been worn out by the time of the battle occurred because they had journeyed all the way around the world from the Baltic to, uh, to East Asia to come to grips with the Japanese Navy. The result of the Battle of Tsushima Strait was almost as one-sided as the Battle of Omdurman a few years before. But now it's the Europeans who were on the receiving end of industrial slaughter. One Russian officer who took part in the battle said, I had not only never witnessed such a fire before, but I never imagined anything like it. Shells seemed to be pouring upon us incessantly, one after another. 
31 of 38 Russian warships were destroyed or surrendered. The Japanese lost only three torpedo boats. Nearly 5,000 Russians were killed to only about 100 Japanese. The Battle of Tsushima was one of the most important and one-sided naval engagements in world history, right up there with the Battle of the Spanish Armada. And just as the Spanish Armada had signaled the arrival of England as a new power on the world stage, so the Battle of Tsushima and the Russo-Japanese War more broadly signaled Japan's arrival on the global stage.